So let's get started. <clears throat> uh, first question. How do I explain to my young children what is happening when I don't really know without frightening them? So the first issue here in this question, how do I explain to my young children what is happening when I don't really know without frightening them, is you have to learn what is going on yourself. Now, obviously, you can't be passing on education to other people that you don't have yourself. Um, and that is where a lot of the anxiety uh, seems to be arising for people is how do I know if the information that I'm getting is credible or accurate? And this, again, comes back to news media and social media. There's a very, very uh, blurred line between the two these days. Because of the, the idea of the 24-hour news cycle, um, at all media outlets want to be the first on the story. And so any whiff of a development is reported as a fully developed story, um, when often they are really the bare bones of the story. And so the next day, maybe more information has come out and they will, you know, sort of, instead of saying, we were premature yesterday, here's the rest of the story, they'll say, uh, authorities are now saying, but the reality is that the authorities were going to say that anyway, you just interrupted them and told the story before they got a chance. And so it makes it look like the authorities are constantly flip-flopping and, and being wishy-washy. Now, credible sources are not necessarily easily identified by their internet address by the name of the website by the uh, commentators all media outlets have um, a bias one way or the other uh, it is pointless to try and argue with someone who doesn't share your bias because you can't uh, convince them uh, one of the things that i suggest and this is a very practical suggestion is google uh, the phrase logical fallacies and get very familiar with logical fallacies and get very familiar with the phrase cognitive biases. So if you get familiar with those two things, uh, cognitive biases, which are mental shortcuts that our brain uses to make judgments, um, uh, and there's many, many, many of them, and they're not just uh, philosophical sort of ideas. These are sort of, uh, have been demonstrated repeatedly by research over the years. Um, for example, the confirmation bias uh, is one I talk about a lot where our brain um, pays selective attention automatically without our, our input. Uh, it it uh, pays attention to and remembers things that confirm what we already think. And, and it either doesn't notice or remember the other stuff or it's very good at twisting stuff so that it still fits with what we think. So that's, that's the thing that, that we all have going on inside of us even the most enlightened person is still uh, prone to confirmation bias, but there's like a hundred of them, similar like that. Logical fallacies are um, sort of effective, but not helpful, which is kind of a weird paradox, ways of arguing. So uh, for, for exa example, uh, an ad hominem attack in a logical fallacy is when um, I'm attacking the person who's making the argument instead of the argument itself, uh, straw man is another one where I, I misrepresent the position of the other person and then shoot down the misrepresented version instead of the actual version. So those, the use of those kinds of tools, logical fallacies and preying on cognitive biases is probably where you can identify uh, most um, effectively what is a reliable source. Like, don't worry about the URL, uh, although sometimes it's fairly obvious. Um, but look at for the quality of the argument, the quality of the information. The question was, how do I explain what's going on without frightening them? We don't necessarily have to not frighten them in order for us to convey the message effectively. And uh, obviously, as parents, we care about our children. We don't want them to be in a state of fear. But, but there is such a thing as a healthy fear. Uh, we, we tell our children in various ways, not to run into a busy traffic, not to get into cars with strangers, uh, not to feed the grizzly bears. And, and, and we may have to resort to fear tactics to do that. And the reality is that um, what's going on right now around us, there, there should be a, an appropriate level of caution. So in terms of like, well, how much fear is okay or how do I explain it to them? 
one of the things that I would find useful is start with questions instead of statements. So ask them, what do you think is going on? What's your understanding of what's happening? Why do you think that's happening? Um, because you might launch into a prepared speech uh, addressing all sorts of aspects of the situation that they actually haven't even thought about yet. And you might be causing more problems than there, than there already existed. So if you sort of do a, a quick survey of like what's on their mind, what are their questions, what are their own answers for those questions, um, you, you can be a bit more efficient in your explanation to them. Uh, the other uh, advantage of asking them first is they may supply to you the language that you can then use to explain what's happening. So instead of you having to think, well, how can I explain this to a seven-year-old in words that they'll understand? When they're answering your questions, they will be showing you the words that they understand. You can then use those words to explain it back to them. And with kids, well, with everybody really, but especially with kids, analogies are a really effective way of getting a point across. Uh, that's going to take some creativity. That's a brief answer I know to that question, but it boils down to get informed by the right sources. Don't worry too much about worrying them too much and use their own uh, information that they give you uh, and the language that they give you to um, give back to them 